Joining us now, the former quarterback, number two overall pick, 1998 draft, Ryan Leaf, friend of the show. Good to see you. Look like you're in playing shape, losing weight. What's going on here? I got engaged. Oh, so yeah. you got to get in wedding shape? I have to get in wedding shape. She said I have five years. So that gives me plenty of time, right? It's a long engagement, dude. <laughs> yeah, I have a sneaky suspicion it'll probably happen before then, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are we invited? Of course. Okay. It's kind of awkward that I had to ask if we're invited. <laughs> well, I didn't even know invitations are going out yet. She's still trying to decide if it's going to be a mountain wedding. I want a destination wedding, like on a beach somewhere where the people can come and, and enjoy the, the event. But I bet it ends up being like in the mountains. We could have it at our man cave. And you could, you know, there's golf there. <laughs> and we could get Buffalo Wild Wings to cater. There's beer on tap. We would have to probably cover up the wall of morale. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Those are the bridesmaids. Hey, she may be open to that. You, you, you've seen her. You, you can ask. Okay. <laughs> uh, a couple of things here. Uh, you know, we're at the NFL Experience, and we were, we were joking about this, but I'm not joking about this. What if you allowed people, fans, to understand what the concussion protocol is so you allowed them to take the baseline test to understand what is asked of these players on the sidelines. How do you think that – would that be a learning experience? I, I bet it would. I, I think it would be kind of interesting to do the baseline and then have them run down to the end of the uh, event and spin around on a bat a bunch of times like people do on the dizzy test yeah. and then come back and do the test after that. That might give them a, a sense of what a concussion may feel like, at least vertigo-wise maybe. Walk us through. What, what questions are you asked? Well, they have a list of the things that they have asked you previously. They're, for me, it was mostly questions that I would have known from years back, long-term memory type of things. And then they ask you those immediately. Uh, the biggest things are, what's the day, where are you at, what city, who's the president? Those Did are you the, get all those right? Pro I, I don't even remember being asked the question. So, oh, <laughs> you, know. you, you were concussed. Yeah. <laughs> so there wasn't, oh, there wasn't many of those <laughs> Uh, that I can remember. You just did whatever you could to get back, and then they used to, you know, the ammonia packets. Yeah. You'd snap those and just, you know, and, and wake you up. That's I watched guys do it before the games. I yeah. saw Dak do it the other day. Did you guys notice that? And he snapped it and was before yeah. the game even starts. And yeah. that's Harbaugh introduced me to that, too. And I used to do that a lot, too, to just wake you up. Uh, speaking of uh, young quarterbacks, we had Jared Goff on a couple of weeks ago, and he said that he's glad he sat. He, he needed to, that he wasn't ready. And it seems the, that you're either all in or you're not. If you, and you've said before, if you sat, you know, might have helped you absorb a little bit more. It, you know, Dak Prescott's able to play right away. We've seen guys who come in and play right away. Carson Wentz plays right away. How do you uh, differentiate between who should and who shouldn't start right well, away? Well, I think the team chemistry. I think if you look at what the Dallas Cowboys have to offer with that offensive line and that running back behind him, it offered a good opportunity for him to ease his way in and learn where. L.A. struggled this year mightily, and it may have been detrimental to his uh, confidence and his ability to be a leader here in the years coming up if he would have started from the get-go. Should the job in Dallas be open to Tony Romo? I, I don't see why not. I mean, if he's able to perform. I, I just, I love Tony. I just, when I just look at him, I look like he's going to hurt himself. Just not even on a football field sometimes. It's just... It, you know, every time I saw him slide or land in a game, it looked like he was going to hurt himself. So, I, amazing career. I think if uh, he had an opportunity somewhere else, you know, that might be. I mean, Dak has become the leader of that football team, and they followed, and they did a tremendous job this year. That, that playoff game was pretty amazing. But what would you do if you're Romo? I'd probably ask to go someplace else. I think that he may see the writing on the wall there. And... Uh, you know, Jerry Jones may leverage that situation as far as he can. I mean, that's what he does as a businessman. I think he loves the topic. I, I think he loves talking about that. Well, Jerry likes to talk. So. What about uh, if you're Garoppolo? Would you say to the Patriots, you know, well, how much longer? Go. Yeah, how much longer is he going to play, Tom? I mean, it I, seems like the guy can play till he's 49. Yes. So if that's 10 years. Well, it, let's say he plays four more years. I don't know. I mean, your shelf life as an NFL football player is, is very limited. And let's say, what year is this for Jimmy? Third? I think. Third or fourth? So let's say seven years. So he'd be seven years in the league, never played. Um, a rookie's going to come in and most likely, you know, he's going to be too expensive for a team to pay. So you look at the string of quarterbacks that have been drafted by the Patriots who were supposed to be the next one. Ryan Mallett, I think, was the biggest one yeah. out of Arkansas. 
And Tom just outlasts them all. Just keeps outlasting them all. Would you rather be the backup quarterback for the Patriots or the starting quarterback for the Browns? <laughs> <laughs> I figured this out a long time ago after I left because my pride got in the way of being a starting quarterback. Just to be in the NFL is a privilege. So I would be the backup quarterback anywhere. I'd be the starting quarterback anywhere. If I could just be a quarterback of the NFL, that would be the privilege enough. Could you have played for the Browns this year? Hell no. Oh, okay. No. I'm just saying. Oh, no. God, no. Just, just, are you sure? <laughs> in my prime, I couldn't play in the NFL very well. <laughs> so, um, Yeah, but you got all this perspective now, Ryan. Yeah, well, that's true. Clear head. I know, I know I can read defenses a heck of a lot better now. So who knows? And you move better than Brady does. Yeah, but he, his, is a, his is a special kind of dance in there. It's, it's different what he does. He moves. He may not be able to run in a straight line, but he can move in a box about this big better but than any person. But explain the eyes, though, because that's what all these defensive players tell you about Brady, is he will look you in a different direction. Like, he'll, he'll say, I'm, gonna, I'm over here. I'm not going over here, but you still buy into that. It's the experience. I mean, he's been in the same offense from the get-go. I ran three offenses in my first two seasons, and he's been doing this from jump, and he's able to know exactly where his receivers are going to be so he can look wherever the heck he wants to look because he knows where he's going with the football before he has to. He, he can toy with those defensive players all he wants. Uh, Ryan joins us. Uh, uh, he has uh, talked about this quite a few times when he's been on the show, uh, Transcend Recovery Community, and uh, you can actually contact Ryan directly on Twitter, at Ryan D. Leaf, and uh, it's a Focused Intensity Foundation. Uh, explain what that is, though. Yeah, this is, uh, of course, we've talked about Transcend Recovery Community every time I've been on here. If you are in need right now, uh, a family member yourself, please reach out, transcendrc.com, and we'll find a place for you. Now, is but this drugs, alcohol? Drugs, everything? alcohol, substance abuse, mental health, anything. Uh, we'll refer you to a place that needs to be done. The Focus Intensity Foundation was something I started in 2011, and it was to raise money for scholarships for people who can't afford substance abuse or mental health treatment. I relapsed in 2012. So that foundation essentially should have went by the wayside. But my father knew what that meant. He just knew I wasn't ready to lead it. And while I was in prison that whole time, he kept it alive, paying attorney's fees, keeping the 501c3 status. So when he knew I was ready, he gave it back to me and we've started doing it again. And I don't want anybody ever who needs and wants and accepts help not to be able to afford it because I wouldn't have been able to go to treatment unless the NFL grant program paid for it for me. So I understand what that feels like. And uh, my dad gave me a great gift. In fact, he's the, the biggest single donor to the foundation to, to this point. It's, uh, it, for more information, it's uh, Focused Intensity Foundation. It's focusedintensity.org or uh, Twitter, at Ryan D. Leaf. It's always great to see you. I hope people respond to this. I know you get great response when you're on our program, and uh, good luck with the uh, wedding. We're ready to go. <laughs> All right. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.